Hello St Aidan's as we like to say on these videos. I just wanted to connect with you over the current situation with our Covid regulations and the pandemic and just to encourage you all and just to let you know exactly where we're up to. We are in an ever-changing situation so the chances are by the time this is recorded and come out to you there might be some further developments. But I want you to hear what I say also in the context of what I shared on the 17th of October in my sermon. I spoke about four realities, four contexts that promote a healthy church. We need to have the truth as a foundation for what we do, and that's God's truth. We need to have honest answers to honest questions. And there are plenty of difficult questions around this pandemic, vaccinations, church, and so on. And they need to then be linked with a very real situation of true spirituality, the Holy Spirit within us, causing us to have the fourth aspect, beautiful relationships. So truth and honesty and true spirituality with beautiful relationships within the church. So hear what I say, please, within those kind of four categories, if you like. And if there's any difficulty you have with anything that I say, speak to us, ask the honest questions, and we will always do our very level best to answer honestly. So we have updated our policy regarding COVID. This mainly pertains to leadership and staff. What we want to do is to create, develop and maintain a safe worship place for all of you and a safe work place for our staff. We're advised by epidemiologists, by doctors, um, at a national church level, diocesan level, uh, and indeed myself, I speak to a number of doctors apart from that to check out what I'm hearing. So what we have developed and what we say is best, is based on the best information and is developed in a way to really help us in this area. You will have heard me say that we want to welcome vaccinated and unvaccinated people alike, and that is true. Part of the reason of that is spiritual, scriptural, and being the body of Christ and not wanting a two-tier kind of church life. And part of it is actually based on the advice from the epidemiologist. The, the obvious motivation for us is to encourage all people to be vaccinated. It is the route out of this situation. It is the safest route, and we would encourage you to do so. But if for a medical reason or some other reason you are not being vaccinated, we still want to welcome you to the church. And the advice from the epidemiologists and the doctors is to create that safe environment through measures that I'm just going to explain to you now. And there's nothing really desperately new in any of this. First of all, I would encourage all of you to always self-assess before you come to church to worship or if you're a staff member before you come to to work and I would encourage the testing of yourself if you have any symptoms there's great advice and guidance on the Manitoba health links for the self-assessment tool uh, and if you're in any doubt as to whether you should come to church at all it's quite a straightforward process to go onto that and go through the links and answer the questions yourselves and we provide the link to uh, that self-assessment tool on our RSVP uh, emails to you for coming to church. Whilst at church, we really want you to mask and to maintain distancing. They are the two biggest steps that we can take to care for one another, and we really want you to, to do that. Because the, the, the virus is promoted and transferred by the aerosol, all singing will be done with a mask on. Uh, so that will just be remaining the same as we've done it but we're also having to ask the lead singers to mask while they sing and I greatly appreciate their efforts uh, in doing that. In our policy then we've also said that leaders need to be vaccinated. This because it reflects our position as a church in the leadership um, and also because those in leadership positions may well have longer periods of exposure to other people. So they need to be vaccinated as well as masked. And for the leadership, we don't just mean those leading music, uh, preaching, um, leading the service. 
If you're in a role that can be kind of defined as a leadership in the service and you're going to be exposed to people for a longer period of time, we want you to be vaccinated. So that would be the greeters, those guiding people to receive communion and those up front in different capacities. Rather than go into all of the micro details now, if you've got any questions on that, please do contact us, speak to us uh, on the Sunday regarding all of that. We will continue to watch and listen and take advice from the medical profession on all of this and just ask you to keep up to date with us via the email website uh, and we'll let you know if there's any further developments or change in all of that. What I'd like to do really now is just to give you an encouragement to be church and to come when you're able and the purpose of it. We often read and mention that wonderful couple of verses in Hebrews 10 that says, let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day of the Lord approaching. Hear me when I say this, if there's a reason you're not coming to church and it's legitimate, I am not criticizing you. I'm encouraging you to meet as a church in whatever form that we can, online, in person, in our small groups, via our cords, in Zoom or on the phone. It's just important to stay together and to be connected as a church, even more during this time of COVID and to face the challenge that we do face together and to overcome it in God's power and in his love. Here's five quick motivations to do this. The first is that we're made in God's image and so we're made for relationships, for communion with each other. We're not meant to be alone. We're meant to have that relationship with God and with one another. Secondly, worship is meant to be corporate, altogether and individual. And it includes the preaching, the communion that we share, how we're able to worship in song and in spirit and prayer. So we're meant to be together in that form of worship as well. Thirdly, we are one body. We're not meant to be isolated from one another. We're not meant to be disjointed. The metaphor that Paul describes as the body of Christ with all the different parts is easy to transfer across in our mind in, a, in an image of this. Can you imagine being without a certain part of your body and yet feeling whole? And it's the same thing with church. We are meant to be together and connected in whatever way that we can at this time. Fourthly, it's an incredible opportunity to witness. When people see us worshipping together, following protocols, giving glory to God, being respectful, denying ourselves, not seeking our own rights, but showing the love that we have for one another and giving glory to God, it is a tremendous witness to others. And the fifth reason is that getting together and worshipping God honours him and glorifies him. And it is what this is about. So there's five motivations to encourage you in all of this. And I just want to finish by quoting a couple more verses from that passage in Hebrews 10. In the end of that chapter, we're encouraged to persevere so that when we have done the will of God, we will receive what he has promised. In everything that we do and live with God, there is part of an effort on our behalf in connection with him. Perseverance and endurance are gifts of the Spirit and we need those at this time. And I would encourage you to persevere during this tough time and to find the glory and joy that God gives us, even in difficult times. And then finally that passage says, But we do not belong to those who shrink back and are destroyed but to those who have faith and are saved. Brothers and sisters, we have faith, we have been saved, so let us not shrink back. Let us give glory to God, let us honour him, and let us have fellowship with each other and with him, loving and supporting us. Let me just offer my love to you today and my praise of God, and just a prayer that you hear this and respond in faith. Be good to see you again soon. Take care.